Bribery, dereliction of duty, obstruction of justice. Those are just some of the allegations against Republican Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton after a months-long investigation led by members of his own party. It's one of several stories around the country that Ali Rogan is following tonight. Jeff, Republican Ken Paxton has faced years of scandal, but now he faces 20 articles of impeachment in the final days of the legislative session. The bipartisan members of the House committee leading the investigation voted unanimously to recommend the impeachment charges late yesterday. The chair moves that the committee adopt the articles of impeachment against Warren Kenneth Paxton, attorney general of the state of Texas, Paxton has denied any wrongdoing and accused the committee of relying on hearsay and gossip and using, quote, their unsubstantiated report to overturn the results of a free and fair election. Sergio Martinez Beltran is a politics and government reporter for NPR's The Texas Newsroom and joins me now. Sergio, thank you so much. Remind us all, what is Attorney General Paxton accused of doing? The list is really long. This House investigative panel uh, came out with a report, and they also drafted 20 articles of impeachment. Uh, those articles include constitutional bribery, abuse of official capacity, misuse of official information, and also retaliation against foreign former employees who reported him in 2020 to the FBI because of alleged misdeeds related to a Austin real estate investor who was being investigated by the FBI himself. And Sergio, these allegations have followed him for years. You just mentioned that the FBI has been investigating him. Why is this Republican-led legislature moving now to pursue impeachment against him? That's a great question. You know, this Republican-led legislature has stand by Paxton all these years, but then it's just now that we're seeing some Republicans uh, starting to push back and question, um, honestly, Paxton's ability to, to serve the state. I think... The time, the timing here, it's it's clear, right? These allegations that Paxton fired four former employees for reporting him to the FBI ended up in a lawsuit, and there's a settlement agreement, a 3.3 million dollar settlement agreement that the Texas legislature is responsible to fund, and Republican lawmakers don't want to pay for that money. They say it's too much, and they also say that uh, the, the taxpayers will be paying for Paxton's alleged wrongdoings and that that's not fair. And so that's where we are. The House Investigative Committee decided to hire four investigators to look into this settlement and, and the evidence around this settlement, and they've decided that it was all Paxton's wrongdoings and that maybe the legislature should not pay for it. Now, Paxton's defenders say that this settlement is just a smokescreen and there's really something else going on here. What does your reporting indicate? I think the timing here is great. We know that uh, House Speaker Dade Phelan, he doesn't have the best relationship with Ken Paxton. And a lot of Republicans, grassroots Republicans in the state, are truly upset at House Speaker Dade Phelan because they say he has not supported the priorities of the Republican Party. Uh, you know, Paxton, a few days ago, before the House committee came out with this, uh, with this notice of impeachment, uh, had accused Phelan of being drunk on the House floor without any proof, just a video that was heavily edited. So I think this is where we are, right? Paxton seems to have come out against uh, Phelan ahead of what he knew was going to be a report that was not going to be favorable to him. Sergio, for those of us who haven't been following Texas politics as closely as you, how big a deal is this? Listen, this is big. This is a big deal. Uh, only two public officials in Texas have been impeached. In fact, the last one was in the 1970s. So this is huge. I mean, also Ken Paxton is beloved by Republican lawmakers in the state of Texas, but also on a national level. He's been fighting uh, with the Biden and Obama administrations over federal spending, uh, immigration, abortion medication. In 2020, he tried to overturn the results of that presidential election. So he's a big figure within the Republican Party. And we know that if the House were to impeach tomorrow, uh, automatically Ken Paxton would be suspended from his duties pending a Senate trial and a decision in that chamber. And as you mentioned, the House is expected to vote on this impeachment tomorrow. Uh, what do you expect the outcome to be? Are there the votes there? The interesting thing here is that the House only needs a simple majority to impeach or to move 
to impeach uh, Paxton. And uh, we know there is over 60 Democrats, and uh, we also know that there are Republicans who uh, have already said they are going to impeach Paxton. So from what I'm hearing and with my sourcing, it seems like Republicans, particularly this House committee, who is the one moving and asking the full House to vote to impeach, they have the votes to, to move forward with this uh, historic decision. Fascinating stuff. Sergio Martinez Bertran with NPR's The Texas Newsroom. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.